Hi there, I'm Josh, and today we're talking about a pretty good combination that was like a budget king back in the day that I decided to revitalize, and that is the i7-4790 and a GTX 1066 gig. I have it paired with 16 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, and let's go over the specs. The i7-4790 has four cores and eight threads with a max turbo frequency of four gigahertz and a base frequency of 3.6 gigahertz. It has a TDP of 84 watts, was launched in quarter two of 2014, and is on the 22 nanometer lithography. The 6 gigabyte GTX 1060 has 1,280 CUDA cores, a graphics clock of 1,506, a processor clock of 1,708, is GDDR5, and has a recommended system power requirement of 400 watts and a 6 pin connector. So do these two budget champs hold up? Let's find out. Let's start off with the newest game, Avatar, at 1080p with the low settings, ran with an average frame rate of 41, a 1% low of 22, and a 0.1% low of 13. Now, I had this unfortunately installed on a hard drive without reading that the specs required an SSD, so there were graphical glitches, as you can see, but the performance was to be expected from a GTX 1060 and a 4790, and it shows that the 1060 is struggling in 2023, as is the 4790. Lethal Company at 1080p ran with an average frame rate of 100 with a 1% low of 72 and a 0.1% low of 26. So there were no issues whatsoever when playing Lethal Company and I got stuck in a hole so I have fun with that footage. Modern Warfare 3 up next at 1080p with a balanced preset we saw an average frame rate of 61, a 1% low of 44 and a 0.1% low of 35. So this game ran pretty well. Um, I was surprised at how well it ran considering the old specs of this machine and we were playing on a hard drive which caused some issues here and there when it came to loading in but actually playing was perfectly fine and there were no discernible problems while playing this game. Destiny 2 at 1080p with the highest settings ran with an average frame rate of 70 FPS. This was in a crucible match and it seemed to run very well and you could easily bump the settings down if you wanted a better frame rate. Apex Legends at 1080p with the lowest settings ran with an average frame rate of 105, a 1% low of 68 and a 0.1% low of 54. So there was no jitter whatsoever. The game ran very well. You could turn the settings up without any issues. Baldur's Gate 3 at 1080p with the high preset, which was a very interesting choice. I let it auto detect my system and this is what it decided. We got an average frame rate of 39, a 1% low of 15, and a 0.1% low of 6. Now I think the reason why I auto detected to high is because the CPU was really holding back the GPU in this case. There were moments where the CPU was up at 100% and the GPU was at like 17, especially in cutscenes for some reason, but most of the time you got a decent mix between CPU and GPU usage. 39 FPS is playable, but you are going to have issues with jitter quite a lot in this game. Counter-Strike 2 at 1080p, once again with the high preset and I tested low medium high etc and high was the best setting because we saw an average frame rate of 59 fps if we went to lower the cpu would bottleneck really hard and give us an actually lower frame rate than 59 so high settings were where it was at and even then i don't consider this to be playable i think that cs2 requires more frames than 60 in order to run properly and there were moments of jitter throughout and last but not least, Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p with a low preset ran with an average frame rate of 58, a 1% low of 38, and a 0.1% low of 7. So once again, the CPU was full throttle a little bit, and that is to be expected on an old architecture like this, but it wasn't an unplayable experience while playing Cyberpunk 2077. So I got a cheap Optiplex and upgraded it to 16 gigs of RAM, and that's where I got the 4790 from. And paired with the GTX 1060, I think that that is the highest graphics card you should possibly go to. I tried it with an RTX 2060, and the CPU was just bottlenecked throughout the entire thing. But I think for the budget-oriented user, getting 16 gigs of DDR3 memory and then pairing an i5-4790 with a GTX 1060 is still a viable option if you're willing to play AAA titles at 30 FPS. With easier to run games running at 60 FPS, you're mainly going to get the low settings and um, you're going to have issues in some games when it comes to the CPU. But overall, I was actually quite impressed by this result. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, like, subscribe, and do what you usually do. And as always, Buy yourself something nice.